The Sultanates of Lanao in Mindanao, Philippines were founded in the 16th century through the influence of Sharif Kabungsuan, who was enthroned as first Sultan of Maguindano in 1520. The Maranaos of Lanao were acquainted with the Sultanate system when Islam was introduced to the area by Muslim missionaries and traders from the Middle East, Indian and Malay regions who propagated Islam to Sulu and Maguindano. Unlike in Sulu and Maguindano, the Sultanate system in Lanao was uniquely decentralized. The area was divided into four sovereign states of Lanao or the Pata Fangampong or Ranao which are composed of a number of royal houses Sapolo Agonema Panoroganan or the 16, 16 royal houses with specific territorial jurisdictions within mainland Mindanao. This decentralized structure of royal power in Lanao was adopted by the founders, and maintained up to the present day, in recognition of the shared power and prestige of the ruling clans in the area, emphasizing the values of unity of the nation patronage and fraternity They had maintained and had successfully defended their sultanate from all Spanish attempts. After the last attempt, the Spanish never again ventured in all their duration in the archipelago for 333 years. The Four Sovereign States The Four Sovereign States of Lanao are Unayan Mesu Bayabao Baloy The Present System the alleged unethical integration by the republican form of government under the Philippine Commonwealth without consent by the first presidency of then Manuel Quezon, the first Philippine constitution since 1934 has prohibited the granting of titles of nobility to Filipino citizens. Legally, the state does not recognize the sultanate system. The sultanate system in Lanao has survived colonialism and non-recognition by state authorities. Like the sultanates in present-day Sultanate of Brunei, Republic of Indonesia, Federal Government of Malaysia and the Muslim region in the Kingdom of Thailand, sultanates in Mindanao have continued to exist despite its non-recognition. In Lanao region, composed of Lanao del Sur and Lanao del Norte, the sultanate system has remained important as an integral part of the Maranao society, symbolizing royal authority, cultural heritage and Islamic influence. At present, Maranaos trace their lineage, legitimacy and authority through their Sausala that has chronicled the origins of the Lanao royal houses. Despite having no legal recognition of the sultanate system, the royal houses of Lanao are now protected ethnic and traditional houses when the Philippine government legislated the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act of 1997 which recognizes and promotes all the rights of indigenous cultural communities and indigenous peoples of the Philippines. History of the Royal Houses Sharif Bankaya begot two children from his third wife Bay Sa Madampai namely, Dakinek of Malabang and Sharif Laut Buizan. Sharif Laut Buizan was installed as sixth Sultan of Maguindano in 1597, and was married to the sister of Sultan Batara Shah Tenga of Sulu. Sharif Laut Buizan begot Gayang and Muhammad de Pachuan Kudarat. Gayang was married to the grandson of Damasanke Adil, Sharif Matanding, whose children reigned as the sultans and by a lobby of Lanao, while his brother Sharif Muhammad Kudarat was installed as 7th Sultan of Maguindano in 1619. In 1656, Sultan Kudarat declared a jihad against the Spanish colonialist. His sultanate was felt as far as Ternate in Indonesia and Borneo, and in fact, its power reached the shores of Bohol, Cebu, Panay, Mindoro and Manila in north. Spanish campaigns in Lanao In 1637, Sebastian Hurtado de Kerkuera decided to send an expedition to subdue the Datus and the people of Lake Lanao. As early as September 1637, he had promised the lake area to the Jesuits, who would get the same the moment it was conquered. The conquest of the Maranaos was entrusted to Captain Francesco Atinza, the alcalde mayor of Caraga. With 50 Spaniards and 500 Carrigans, the captain landed in Bayag, then proceeded to the Maranao territory, reaching the lake on 4 April 1639. There were about 2,000 families or 800 inhabitants. The Spaniards brought with them six collapsible boats that they fitted out in the lake. The Datus of Lanao initially stalled the Spaniards. 
They promised tribute and to accepted the missionaries. The allies of the Spaniards observed the movement of inhabitants into the interior. The Maranaos could easily muster 6,000 warriors from among the four confederation of Lanao. Lack of firearms though was their disadvantage although they have their traditional weapons. Governor Almonte dispatched Major Pedro Fernandez del Rio with 70 Spaniards and 500 Visayans to join with the forces of Atienza. The expedition had to pass through the area of Dalan, Gandamatu, in Makadar, and Nanagan where Sharif Matanding, who was married to Gayang, a sister of Sultan Kudarat, they engaged and harassed the reinformants of the colonizers. After a most difficult passage made by the fierce resistance of Sharif Matanding, Major Pedro del Rio finally made it to the shores of the lake where he joined the forces of Atienza. In the middle of April, Capt. Atienza and part of his troops left for Bayag and fortified it with a stockade and sailed for Caraga. In October of the same year, an additional force of 50 Spaniards and 500 Bojolanos arrived under the command of Capt. Pedro Bermudez de Castro who had orders to build a fort in Marawi to start imposing Spanish sovereignty. Sultan Kudarat visited his sons-in-law in Lanao, Balindong Basar and Dianatan Naim of Budig. He gathered all the datus of Lanao and delivered the now legendary speech in this form. The Maranaos, inspired by the Sultan's speech took up arms against the newly built fort. They used indigenous means to get at the fort and set it on fire. Three of the Spanish boats, brought from Bayag were captured. Atienza formed a relief expedition and saved the Spaniards. The Maranao warriors after 29 days of siege left their position. Afraid to experience once more the starvation and horrors of siege warfare, the Spaniards proceeded to burn their own fort and made a retreat back to Iligan. In 1640, Capt. Atienza tried once more to conquer the Maranaos. For the second time, the Spaniards burned the fields and retired to the coast, but not without losing some men on the way due to ambushes. The second attempt to colonize and make Catholics of the Maranaos had utterly failed. In payment for their freedom, making true Sultan Kudarat's wisdom, the Maranaos lost that year's harvest but remained unmolested until the coming of the American capped John Pershing and his troops. Birth of the Sultanates in Lanao in Lanao, the Maranaos started to be acquainted with the Sultanate system in the 15th century before Spanish colonial era through the influence of Sharif Kabungsuan, who was enthroned as first Sultan of Maguindano in 1520. In 1640, Balindong Basar of the House of Mesu became the first Maranao chieftain enthroned as Sultan, with specific title as Sultan Diagaborola. He was charged to enforce the teaching of Islam and the law and order in Lanao. On the same year Sultan Diagaborola consulted the seven Maranao Datus on how to govern Lanao. They were Dianatan Naim of Butig, Sultan Martin of Makadar. Datu Burris of Pagayawan, Datu Ottawa of Ditsan, Datu Akari of Remain, Anbayor of Bansaya, Enki Okoda of Minitepad, Alanak of Baloy. The eight wise men, including Balindong Basar, agreed to create the four sovereign states of Lanao, Patafangamponga Ranao, composed of the states of Unayan, Mesu, Bayabao and Baloy, and the 16th Royal Houses, Panaroganan or Royal Houses, and on a lower level, the 28 members of the legislative body, Hayakambaya Ko Teratid, and the area sultans. The socio-political system was based on the Teratid, IJMA, laws, customary laws, and adapted practices of the Maranaos. The Fangampong system was further divided into smaller socio-political units. The Teratid, an ancient order or law bound together the four states or principalities of Lanao into an alliance or confederation and defined their relationships. There is no central, all-powerful authority but every state or principality respected the traditional alliance termed Kangajinawai. One problem that beset the Sultanate of the Four Confederation of Lanao was the identification of ancestral land area Kawali, of each state Fangampong. They were consequently defined by Datu Piscan of Unayan, Datu Papawan of Bayabao, Amian and Simban of Mesu and Datu Dilian of Baloy. 
The agreement known as Kiatadhamana and delineated the areas as Dalama, located in the municipality of Milondo, the boundary between Bayabao and East Mesu, Sar, Mesu Municipality, the boundary between East Mesu Municipality and East Unayan to Madamba Municipality, the boundary between West Unayan and West Mesu, and Bakayawan in Marantau Municipality, the boundary between West Mesu and Bayabao. Surprisingly, there is no identified boundary between Bayabao and Baloy but the reason is that both Pangampong lineage come from the same family tree. Under the Kianjinawai friendship, their boundary need not be established. In 1754, the Maranaos kept on increasing their maritime strength and accelerated their attacks on the Spaniards. Leyte and Calamians bore part of the brunt of their attacks. About 900 Maranaos and Iranans once landed to raid for slaves in Albay and captured more than a hundred inhabitants. In Balayan, Batangas, they looted everything they could lay their hands on. The Maranaos and Iranans were thus responsible to discourage the Pantados of the Visayas to come with the Spaniards into their forays in Mindanao and Sulu. The Maranaos and other Moros made these attacks since most of the native troops used against them were Visayans. The events prompted the Spaniards to devise a more elaborate and effective naval system of defense as the Visayans blames the Spanish government to be unable to defend them even after giving yearly tribute to the crown. In 1757, the Iranans and Maranaos accelerated their attacks on the Spaniards. There were frequent naval encounters between them and the Spaniards. In some of them, according to reports, thousands have perished. In a span of four years, the Maranao raids for slaves on Visayas reduced the number of tributes to the Spanish government by at least 100,000. For example, figures showed that the district of Panay, it paid 1,500 tributes in 1750. By the year 1757 there are only 500 tributes paid. In Remblan, the number of tributes went down from 1370 to 995, while in Calabu, Capiz, it decreased from 1164 to 549. Many coastal towns were totally destroyed and the Visayan population was reduced considerably. In 1759, Datu Aber Palawan and his men attacked the Spanish squadron in the northern part of Mindanao. He was martyred and buried in Radapan, Lanao, now Terapan, Linaman, Lanao del Norte. General Valeriano Weiler, the Spanish governor general, decided to deal with the Maranaos in 1889. He ordered his troops to land in Malabang, in Lanao, to conquer the unconquered Maranaos. He had 1,242 soldiers in two columns. The first column started from Malabang while the second column started from Iligan. This two-pronged attack on Maranao territory from the northern and western parts of Mindanao was a reminiscent of the 1639 campaign against the Maranaos. After a few bloody clashes, Marawi was occupied on August 19, 1889, but not without encountering strong resistance from the Maranaos led by Datu Amai Pakpak. In September 1891, Weiler finally terminated his campaign without actually conquering the Maranaos. On May 15, 1892, Friar Pablo Pastel drafted the blueprint for the temporal and spiritual conquest of the Sultanates in Philippines for the gradual reduction of the political and other powers of the Sultans, Datus, Sharifs and Panditas in such a way that they would all eventually become powerless. The Spaniards considered all the Moro communities as the primary obstacle in their conquest and colonization of the whole archipelago. On June 5, 1892, the Datus of Lanao cooperated in the fortification of the section around Agus River for their mutual defense. In February 1895, systematic Maranao attacks on the Spanish forts began. As a result, the Spanish invaders launched another Spanish expedition on March 10 of the same year to attack and capture Marawi, once and for all. The march to Marawi commenced. The Spaniards found themselves faced by strong kata under the command of the same Amai Pakpak. The Maranao warriors fought with equal bravery but lost the war with the martyrdom of Datu Akadar Amai Papak, his son, 23 Datus and 150 Maranao warriors. The Spaniards lost 194 men. About 3,000 Spanish troops, and countless volunteer from Zamboanga, Misamis and Sibugay were involved. This did not stop the Maranaos to continue fighting. The Spanish Cota in Marawi was in a state of siege. Sporadic attacks on the garrison and ambushes became the order of the day. 
The Maranaos around the lake continued their resistance against the Spaniards even after gunboats were brought to Lake Lanao to launch a campaign against the communities around it. Maranao efforts to wrest the area from the Spanish however proved fruitless as the Spanish held onto their conquered territory until they eventually withdrew, but only after their defeat to the Americans in the Spanish-American War which commenced on May 1, 1898. The American Regime and the Commonwealth in 1899, the sultans themselves led their people in fighting both the Spaniards and later, the Americans. They all ended as martyrs along with their families and warriors. In 1889, the Americans landed in Malabang, Lanao, and occupied the Spanish camp without much fanfare and named it Camp Conquera. Two years later, the Americans proceeded to the lake area but were met by Maranao warriors in Upper Bayang, Amai Barang, Mamarinta, Pitilan, Sultan of Bayang and 300 warriors clashed with the Americans in a fierce battle. The Sultan and his men were crushed. The Sultan of Bayang perished but Captain Vicar also died. The American camp in Upper Bayang was named after him, Camp Vicar, Lanao. In Tugaya, Lanao, Datu Sarwang and many others also died fighting against the American forces coming to their place. Upload the picture of Pershing and the NY Times clip, Justice Cayetano. During the Commonwealth regime, Amai Manabiling of Marawi challenged the authority of Justice Cayetano Arellano, of the Philippine Supreme Court, in enforcing the government laws to the Maranaos. He led a campaign that Mindanao should be separated from the Philippines. The policy of attraction of the Americans in Lanao under General Pershing offered empty promises to the Maranaos who felt that the government deprived them with the continued exercise of their traditional and cultural practices and interference to their religion, customs and traditions. On March 18, 1935, 120 Datus of Lanao, with 30 sultans signed a strongly worded letter, popularly known as Dansalan Declaration to U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt and the United States Congress asking them that the Filipinos should be granted independence and the Moro province should also be given their own independence or better left under American rule until such time that they were prepared to grant their independence to be known as Bangsamoro Republic. The Sultanates of Lanao at present and the Mindanao problem the entire sultanates in Mindanao, Philippines at present have legally been unrecognized and practically reduced to non-entities by a provision in the Philippines Constitution prohibiting the granting of a title of nobility to a Filipino citizen. It was the responsibility of the sultans not only to defend their people and communities but also their religion. Among the Muslims in Mindanao, there is no way one can separate the sultanate from their culture and tradition. The royal sultanate could play a very important role especially because by accepted tradition, constituents respect and value sultanate authority. For example, in the preservation of social order. When there is no source of power except the sultan, the community is stable. The sultan has influence and command to impose and execute the highly respected Taratib and IJMA. When a dispute happens and the sultan is not personally available to settle it, he can simply send his tobao, scarf or headdress, through his emissary and it would be enough to make the parties stay in suspended animation and wait until he arrives to settle their dispute. The sultan has the power to ask anyone within his territory to come for questioning, for punishment if he committed an offense or for anything that is for the interest of his people. He only needs to beat his gong and it is enough for the people to come him. When a buffalo is stolen by a person from another area, it becomes his duty to recover and restore it to the owner. When conflicts between sultanates occur, it was the duty of another sultan to come and talk to them for peaceful settlement. The common practice used by the sultan in settling Rito's feuds even until now is tracing the family lineage of the conflicting parties with the ultimate end that both parties will realize that they are relatives either by affinity or by consanguinity. Kambabadabada, blood relations, kapamagongoa, friendship, kapamagadeta, respect, and other relationships of the forefathers are being recalled. In most cases, disputes are resolved with tears flowing from the persons witnessing or present in the scene. The 17 ruling royal sultanates in Lanao The original number of the ruling royal sultans of Lanao was only 15-15. 
It is now increased to 17, 17, with the creation of Sultan Adamalandong Sa Budig hence, it was recently renamed as the 17. Panoroganans of Lanao. A. Pangampong. Is a principality where the head is addressed as His Royal Highness, HRH. The Panoroganans are the ones entitled to approve or disapprove the Teratib, IJ Moss and Adats in their respective Pangampong. This gave them the title as His Royal Highness or now localized as Panoroganans. They also created the 28 Piakambaya Ko Teratib, ruled by a sultan but not royal sultan, that is seemingly similar to a legislative council or body that formulates the Teratib and IJMA which are distributed by Pangampong. The places under each of the Pada Panjimpong Aranao, four principalities of Lanao, are Pangampanga Unayan covers the south of Lake Lanao strictly from Bulldon, Barira, Matanog, Parang of Sharif Kabunshuan Province and the long coastal area parallel to Alana Bay going to northern up to Zamboaga Lanao border. In Lanao del Sur, it includes Butik, Sultan Dumalandong, Lumayanog, Dago Ok Makadar, Bayang, Tubaran, Binadayan, Maragong, Ganasi, Pualas, Madamba, Kalinogas, Kapitangan, Balabagan and Malabang. In Lanao del Norte, it includes Cormatan, Lala and Tubod. Pangampanga Mesu covers the municipalities of Milando, Taraka, Tamparan, Mesu, Wado Balindong, Tugaya, Bacolod Kalawi, Madalam and Madamba. Pangampanga Bayabao is presently composed of the municipalities of Ditsan Remain, Bubong, Buadipusa Buntong, Kapai, Marantau, Saguaran, Maguang, Bumbaran, Wau, Lumba Bayabao, Puna Bayabao, Piagapo in Lanao del Sur and the city of Marawi. Pangampanga Baloy consists of the municipalities of Pantar, Tangolon I, Kapai, Baloy, Pantau Ragat, Puna Piagapo, Tankal, Magsaysay, Kauswagan, Linaman, Bacolod, Mago and Colombogan in Lanao del Norte and Iligan City. The 16 Royal Houses of Lanao Unayan The Royal House of Budig, Dianatan Naim the source of genealogy in Ranao Pangampong. The Royal House of Pagayawan. The Royal House of Bayang. The Royal House of Dumalandong Masu. The Royal House of Mesu. The Royal House of Datu a Kabagatanpuna Bayabao. The Royal House of Bansayan. The Royal House of Rogan The Royal House of Taparoglumba Bayabao The Royal House of Minitupad The Royal House of Boracot The Royal House of Bacolod The Royal House of Maribamala Bayabao The Royal House of Remain The Royal House of Ditsanbaloy the Royal House of Baloy History Short History about Kalangat of Unayan and Bataran de Kalatan of Machu, formerly Zainan, the first founding ancestor of Mesu Pangampong, his later descendant were Pondag and Amaloya Thapan. Thapan was married to Patri Kaizadan daughter of Aloyodan son of Sarip Kabunshuan of Johor, Malaysia, who in turn descended from Fatima, the daughter of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Thapan and Kaizadan begot Ankaya of Mesu, Manzang of Milando, Dayansalong of Binadayan and Ambo of Lumba of Bayabao. Ankaya married to Potter Iowa of Taraka and begot Datu Ongar, father of Balindong Bsar, Beira and Bay Kaoa. Bay Kaoa was married to Datu Sandor of Baloy son of Sarip Bato Lakongan begot Panambong in Talagian of Maguindano from a Baloy royal princess. Datu Sandor and Bay Kaoa bore Maruhom Kaharodan and Samar known as Datamaz of Watu and Taraka municipality. Maruhom Kaharodan first married to Amara in Unayan daughter of Datu Kalipa and second married to Gunup sister of Alanak of Baloy and Bor Olan wife of Pagayawan in Setapana Unayan and his brother Radia Palawan, first sultan of Raya and the famous saber Sa Radapan, who died a martyr in 1759 in Radapan Linaman Lanao del Norte, in defense of freedom, homeland and Islam against the Spanish invaders. 
Radia Palawan a Maranao hero, married to the granddaughter of Balindong Bsar and begot four Maruhams, had a Datu Saraya, namely, Maruhom Salam, Maruhom Bsar, Maruhom Datu Asimban, Maruhom Siddiq, and the Bay Saraya who was married to Maruhom Siddiq son of Dewan of Bayang. See also References